All right. This is a fill-in presentation, so I have half an hour. Well, less than that, 25 minutes now. Um, I am going to talk about meta virtualization. Uh, this is one I have done probably for the past five years, off and on. I updated a little bit for something I did last week, so we're reusing it for this. Um, this is me. I do a few things for the project. I've been doing it for a while. Um, yeah, and I work for AMD now. Still doing the same thing I did before I worked for AMD. So what I'm gonna, what I'd like to cover in this one is a little bit of. I don't have my slides there to read, so uh, I do always do a brief history of meta virtualization. It's been around for a long time. Technology tom, timeline, cover a little bit of why you would use the Octa project for your containers. I have an evangelist over here in the corner. Josh will stand up and um, let us know. Uh, sort of some past and current container build deployment things, and then some future. Things that if there's ever time this year, next year, the year after, uh, we'll get to them. Uh, we don't need this. Don't need this. All right, so here you go, a brief history, meta virtualization. It's been around since 2012. Um, a lot of commits, it's where we centralize all of our virtual machine. I've got, and I added this today, quotes for virtualization because I talk with my hands. Um, uh, where we integrate all virtualization technologies where over 50% of the layer is container stuff. So if you consider system virtualization, a.k.a. namespaces, a.k.a. containers, then that's where it is. Slightly confusing name, but that's all right. Um, it's sort of the virtual machines and containers, all of the core tech to generate the images, as well as some old school things like Zen, um, you know, Docker as well as newer container runtimes and things like that. Um, it's tested, it's improving, um, it needs a better CI, but I know other people run it in CI, so I don't have to. Um, and it's sort of the baseline that we use for creating OE derived virtualization solutions. This is the, I just updated this one. Um, this is the chart I always have of the different things that have appeared and. <coughs> Come in the meta virtualization left. There's a few broken ones. If you feel like sending patches or stars, uh, I leave them in there broken on purpose. So hopefully somebody will see them, and if they need them, they'll contact me, and I will tell them patches accepted. You need on purpose. What? Started, ended. On this? Yeah. Yeah. Like when something came in, and then when it broke. Oh yeah. Well, I guess I could do that. Yeah. Right now, nothing's been removed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hard to make remove things. I carry them along forever. Um, but yeah, you can see that it started way back in 2012 with LXE was sort of the only container thing. Zen and KVM appeared shortly thereafter. Libvirt, Open, vSwitch, the things you needed to sort of do a, a KVM or a virtualization um, type solution. And then nothing for roughly a year and a half, two years. And then a lot more uh, container stuff appeared. Um, While well, we got Zen for ARM, that's exciting. Um, Docker appeared, and I kind of am also charting another axis of complexity. So you can see we are slowly getting a few more um, complex things into the container, into the into meta virtualization as well. So all of the tools and the open container image the standard came in, different versions. Of course, Red Hat showed up with Podman, C run for those that want a run C but not in Go, and then out to the end. Lately, we've added. Uh, different ways to assemble the images, K3S, Builda, and some other things that have showed up. So if you know of a container runtime or something that is being used that's not in meta virtualization, um, I won't even say patches except that I'll say let me know and I can help you figure out how to integrate it because almost none of these are easy to integrate because there's five languages and four different build systems and then they have to have a distro feature to work with CNI versus Netavark and Aardvark. And anyway, there's a lot of different things to put together. So if you think there's something that's missing in there, um, I have a future work slide as well. Let me know, and we can probably figure out how to get it. Um, because I would rather have them in meta virtualization than scattered across a whole bunch of different ecosystem layers. We should use it as a collection point. So I'm willing to put in the effort to make sure it stays like that. 
I usually don't need to say this because I always say it when I'm talking about the, um, uh, the one thing I do find kind of humorous is we started with mainly virtual machines. More, there's more solutions, a lot more complexity, more containers, plumbing tools, and, image, and then now we have virtual machines that are managed like containers. So we're kind of we're kind of back again. And that would be your, um, you know, Kubernetes can launch and, and uh, run X, run V, different ways that they like. Nobody wants to manage a, a virtual machine with libvirt anymore. They want to push it and manipulate it like a service. So. All right. So this is the the sales pitch, right? Um, you know, why would you use the Yocto project for your container versus maybe the host image that runs the container? Because you're like, ah, I want that to be small, I want that to be secure, I want to control it, I want to optimize it, I want to do whatever. That sounds like open and better than the Yocto project, right? But what runs in the container, isn't that all about the application? So why do you care about building from the source? Why don't you just do a Docker pull, dump it onto the root file system, and then run it later? And as everybody knows, I'll say, yeah, you can absolutely do that. I won't stop you from doing that. Um, but this is in then link into all the rest of the talks. It solves all the problems you probably don't know that you have yet. You know, whether you need SBOM, SPDX, you have security issues, right? There's, there's all sorts of problems that you probably don't know until you try to ship your application in a container. Um, and that, you know, we're only using standards compliant and compatible technologies. There is no, absolutely no invention of any container bit whatsoever in meta virtualization. It is just an integration layer of, uh, of things other people do. Um, and the big thing is over time, you know, somebody said, that was one of the pushes when we had a little dance we were doing about whether sh some of the bits could go to OE core. And the problem I said, none of the container runtime should go to OE core or they all have to go. You can't just pick one, right? So the big thing is that we're not picking a winning one container runtime to rule them all. Uh, so the, all anyone that's in there is supported, and you can choose um, what you do. So this is a little section about some build deployment challenges. So for the definitions, I gave a long talk at one of the ELCs on this. Um, so I pulled these these out of it. Um, so for our purposes, like you hear building a container. And somebody, maybe they think, give me a Docker file and I run Docker build and it fetches RPMs or DEBs and different bits and pulls them together. But for our definitions in the open embedded um, Yocto project ecosystem is for a build, it's the compilation of the construction from a source of a container or a guest, because I tried to update this to be more inclusive to virtual machines because <laughs> I was ignoring virtual machines the last few times I've given it. Um, or, but I've added recently, or fetching of OE built artifacts. We don't have to build it from source, but we do want to know that they are hopefully open embedded built artifacts so we can link it back to all of the tracing and um, optimization that we do. And deployment is simply installing a container on a target or an image. That can be a build time, that can be a run time, that can be however you want. It doesn't necessarily mean deploying it through a CI pipeline with services and microservices and stuff. Just getting the container um, image format, if you will, onto a target and running it. So for building, actually, I think Scott did one of the first, where, which, which, which one of the ELCEs you did a talk on? Edinburgh. Was it Edinburgh? Yeah, pre-COVID. Yeah, it was pre -COVID. yeah. Um, so like the container guest build, right? It's sort of, it, OE core has the base support with a container FS type and that really just makes sure there's no kernel and some of the other bits and pieces of a full image that you don't need. Um, and the techniques to build those containers have sort of evolved over time, whether it was multiple builds, you know, you built your base bit of it and you built your host and then you built your container and then you assembled it manually to you know, using multi-config to just say my image depends on my container, which will build your container. It can have a different configuration, different tuning, right? And then I've added OCI image type classes to meta virtualization so we can construct um, OCI image types that can be directly either loaded by Podman or use Scopio to copy them to a registry and do things like that. And then, of course, we've had the virtual, um, Yosef, will know, he, can, he can regale you on the virtual machine image formats and how you just, you can get those from OE Core and then if yours isn't, does, isn't there, convert, right? It's just the sort of a post-processing uh, convert sort of thing. Um, 
but the big thing is that it's always now, especially with multi-configs, it's sort of leveraging the Yocto project um, core values. We're not trying, no duplication, no reinvention, just use multi-config, use the different things that are in core. And if it's not there, work to get it into core to support the container and the guest bill. That being said, I still, I know in me, I still find, <laughs> regardless of any of those methods you use, I still find it a little bit clunky and a little bit um, confusing when you have to get your multi-config target correct and where do I put that comp file and what's the tune and why is it telling me this dependency is not there and if you then have a BB class extend native, all of a sudden it's looking for a, anyway, it gets very confusing. I don't think it's very end user friendly. Um, Personally, I have that in my yeah, streamlining work. Personally, I think it would be fantastic if you could just include a class into your recipe and say, package the output of this thing into a container and just be done with it, right? And then you would get an OCI image application container from your recipe. Or if you did it to an image, you would get a system container. But uh, there's some work to be done there yet. Um, also, the other thing that I find is the challenges is that the path to get to something like a Docker build. It's not, there is no one way to do it, right? The path to a binary container construction or reuse is not clear. Um, yeah, I could build it, but then I have to build a package feed. I could build my base container. I have to have my own package feed. I have to keep it updated. I have to make sure it's publicly accessible so you can do a Docker pull. Is there a base container on uh, artifact registry somewhere that you can include? And how is that up to date? Right? So the path for all the commonly cited guidelines that you see for every other project, they don't really apply. So any documentation we have to do ourselves, and it would be hopefully better with something I'm going to talk about later if we can get some reference um, binary artifacts and we can have some guides that look more like everybody else's uh, container build. Uh, the one that, uh, and then the challenge is with the deployment. So if you manage to survive the multi-config build, um, then you know how do you want to get those images onto the target? Um, so it varies, of course, based on the container runtime or the hypervisor. Uh, I spent a while trying to disassemble how Docker's fire lib container root, and I, you know, I failed. Um, because some options um, in that you might want to look at for deploying a container is directly to the image install at build time. So it would be there when you boot, uh, started automatically. Um, whether you want to publish it to a registry artifact so you could then push it and pull it onto your target later. Um, do you want to deploy it with a management framework like Kubernetes or K3S? And then everything else I throw into custom hacks. Um, they usually involve running Docker in an image recipe that pulls it down and then dumps it out to an archive and then untars the archive onto your root file system. So that's everything else. Any versions of that, up to including the ones that actually run sudo to do it, right, on your host. So, um, so yeah, don't do that if you can help it. Um, and don't send it to me to merge, because those are the that, that's the line. I won't merge those ones. Um, so the challenge is almost with the technology is they're really not cross-friendly at all to try to deploy the containers. It's a little bit better now that you've got the rootless containers and they understand non-root execution, execution and namespaces and stuff, but what they don't like is running under our build environment under sudo, um, or sudo, or however you want to say it, um, because I'm finding the namespace calls get trapped and it errors out. So um, th that's the challenge, is it's the not cross from the requirements creep where somebody says, oh, well, every single tool that knows how to build a container also actually wants to build the root file system for you on the container and wants to build the layers, it wants to use its binaries, it wants to use all kinds of stuff. It's hard to get a small tool that doesn't try to do everything. Like Bazel, like Ross and I went to a talk yesterday, wants to do these things, want to do everything for you. They want to use build kit, they want to do the build, they want to create the container and then finally deploy it. We already have all that in open embedded and that's what we should be using, not sort of distilled versions of that from other tools. And that's, that's my section about complaining about container build and deployment. Um, the challenges with meta virtualization itself, these are two big ones. Um, 
the CNCF landscape is huge. If you've ever gone to the landing page for CNCF and you get a, the text is about 0.3 font and you have a large horizontal and vertical scroll bar and there's so many projects, you know, which ones to choose or what to use. So we kind of have the plumbing ones, but there's a whole world of tracing and logging and stuff that's not even part of metaversalization. But so the pace and the scope of development upstream um, and the languages that they're all written in have their own set of channels. I sort of had to become a go lang at least build expert, even though I didn't want to be, just because of so many complex Go applications and meta-virtualization. Um, it's hard to then factor out meta-virtualization into with the different definitions of CRI, the container, you know, runtime interface, the networking, competing efforts to build their own vertical silo. So it's right now there's not a whole lot of useful package groups and divisions that you can just set within meta virtualization because it's hard to find uh, a common thing for that. Um, and again, um, this is my, and so forget all this, and this one's contrib contributors for the hard to solve issues. I have scripts that I can upgrade most of meta virtualization recipes, no problem at all. Um, it's actually probably faster because I can build it and test it. It's the things like how do we factor them into logical blocks of functionality so we can switch bin, bits in or out. How do we work with lib container to pull out the namespace support so we could hopefully cross install a container, right? How does that interact with the syscall trapping that we have in sudo? Those are the hard to solve problems and those are the ones that I look at about every six months when I'm done upgrading kernels and everything and everything else. And it takes me about two months to remember what I was doing. I get about two days to work on it, and then I put it down again. So if you know anybody who's interested in those hard-to-solve problems, you can send them uh, in my direction, and I'll let them do it. <laughs> um, how am I doing for time? It's 2 o'clock. I'll keep going. You tell me when it's on. The vision. The Okta project, or open embedded as a first-class platform for building CNCF technologies. Um, one thing I would say, there's absolutely no reason why, you know, everybody says I need a small foot, footprint container and they start their Docker file and they say import Alpine. Well, if we had a binary reference, highly tuned, small footprint um, base layer, you could say import, I don't know, then we'd all argue over the name. Let's say import, <laughs> import Yocto. <laughs> Yocto Linux? No. Uh, import. Uh, <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, it's a name. Import yeah. something. Anyway, there's absolutely no reason why the things that we build out of OE shouldn't be running on somebody's enterprise distro just as a, you know, it could just be running in the container and providing that, right? And then you've got advantages to doing that as well. It doesn't have to be OE on OE, right? And vice versa. Um, so that's the sort of the vision. And like I said, I said this before, a simple inherit to generalize containerized output. Uh, direct deploy to images. These are the two I'd like to figure out how to do this year. Um, binary artifacts, I guess that one as well, since I'm going to be talking about the binary reference distribution. And then it's, it's hard to believe since 2012 we don't actually have a really good definition, say container host. What do you want in it? Everybody's got one in their layers, I'm sure. Can we all agree? Like, could we put a base reference one in there and have a few image install variables like we do with core image minimal that you could just add to it and then at least we'd have a common idea, right? So there's no agreed upon container or VM host image definitions and package groups in OE core, or sorry, meta virtualization. And it'd be nice to do that um, as a simple thing to get started. We can all argue about what to go in, how small, how big, system D, no system D, you know, but it's still a useful conversation to have. Um, yeah, so this is sort of more of the upcoming stuff. Again, the streamline builds, why I keep messing around with it, some kind of dynamic packaging way to capture the output. Uh, direct image install, that's the big one. And then some sort of simple auto start. So we could abstract a little bit what container runtime you're running. Like just write a simple systemd service or sysv script that starts them. And then this one I want to do is the multi-layer OCI container and image build. It'd be nice if you built it once. You got the base layer. And then if you build it again, we could actually just layer it on as the second layer. So you would actually have that ability to um, look at the different, because it's all built into the OCI image specification. We could have as many layers as we want. It overlays, you could do your thing, we could pop back and forth. And, but right now, it's like you built it, 
it generates the container, it's the one layer, and you're done. So it'd be nice to put in that, but again, the complexity of how do you say you want the next layer and why? Like, yeah. it, it's not as simple. It's easy to say, it's hard to do. Uh, reference container host application system that falls out of the binary reference um, distribution work. Um, some easier ways to do uh, to test. There's no reason why if your architecture is Mac in particular that you can't quickly spin up a container. Just test the container that you built on your host. And then maybe an easier way, similar to as we run in QEMU, just to be able to push it right to your management framework and test it immediately. So a little bit ways to make the pipeline out of meta virtualization a little bit quicker uh, and easier to test either locally or through a, through a framework. And that's it. So how far have you gotten into that baking of the container images directly into Yocto? Like, do you have a good workflow around doing that? And then do you do that in lieu of uh, updates later from a registry? No, you do both. You I do would both? do both, okay. yeah. But yeah, I've got some broken do not merge patches in my local, in my branches where I've done stuff like made sure Podman can be built natively, chasing all those dependencies. Because Podman seems like the easiest route um, because it's a little bit more willing to install to a directory of your choosing. Um, I would love to simply take the OCI image format and be able to use our own tools to manipulate it into the structure they want, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I mean, it'd be trivial to write our own thing where we had to just copy the OCI container into varlib wherever we choose and then write a little script that just found them and started them we i could you could do that in like two days but then somebody's going to say i want to manage it with podman so i can do an update right so yeah so i'm i'd say i'm about 70 percent of the way through it and, and trying to figure out the namespace parts of it because it immediately wants to start looking at user ids and the mapping and the permissions of the root file system like the, it's trying to write root files in so it really has to be run under our our pseudo environment, and so that those that's where I am right now is trying to figure out why it's 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 it, it just traps and you, you just fail when you're doing it. So that's about where I am right now. Once that once we do it for one, it should be fairly easy to do it for many. So. I know not everyone's the biggest fan of systemd, but one of the presentations I did. Nspawn? Yeah, it was Nspawn. Yeah. It's actually it's easier to do this kind of stuff with Nspawn than yeah. a lot of the other tools. And I think now with the current systemd, you can actually do it with OCI, OCI containers, images. Yeah. It'll actually start them right up with Nspawn. Yeah. Which is, you know, not Kubernetes or Docker, but it's something that works it'd out of the box, e kind of. It'd be an easy way to write a service that starts them automatically that we didn't create ourselves. Yeah. You're tied to systemd, but usually if you're running containers, you've got yeah. systemd in there So, Because I think I did a presentation where I dumped the root of S of the container into our lib, whatever, and then just did end spawn. But then, like, I think <laughs> that was before they had the OCI support. So yeah, now you should be able to just copy it in there and it should run. Um, it, one of the things we now do in AGL, which I don't know if anyone came by the table yesterday, is our instrument cluster guys, they want to use LXC system containers. And I actually gave up on the, like, packaging the root file system up as, a, you know, a package and then installing that package into the host rootFS because you quickly get into funkiness around user IDs and JIDs because the... You'll have stuff potentially in the guest images where your minimal host image doesn't have any of those users. Yeah. And so now I do a lot of this stuff as like a, a root of fest post process. Yeah. I just dump it in, yeah. which isn't clean in some degrees, but it, it avoids a whole bunch of these kinds of things. So we'll have to see when It'd be nice to some see of this if there's other some of stuff the, yeah, works. If, yeah. If there's some that can be used or me, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, I tend to, even when you run a system, if you run a, like a, a Podman system container, you then have to play tricks with systemd and, yeah, anyway, so, yeah. yeah. It'd be nice to at least, if we could flush out 
everybody's little tricks that they're doing and see if there's any common things that we can move into metaversalization itself. Yeah. I think we're good. All right.